we are back. So uh, I'm going to let you introduce yourself and say sure. what awesome product you're responsible for. Yeah. My name is Rahul Bhatia, and I work as a product manager in Amazon S3. And today we launch or we announce the general availability of SD Select, and we are really excited to see how customers would use it. It, so, is, yeah. it is basically the coolest feature I have ever played with uh, in, in, in like years. So let me, let me explain it in my words, and yeah, you, sure. can, you can correct me. Yeah. Uh, you're basically taking the ability to access uh, individual rows or even columns in your, in your CSVs and JSON files and things like this, uh, whether they're gzipped uh, yeah. or not, uh, and you can go in and you can say, S3, instead of returning this whole you know, one terabyte file, I want you to just return uh, a few, a few, you know, rows, rows a few data something. points that match something, right? And that basically pushes all of this work onto the storage compute layer, yeah, and lets you do drastically less network traffic for every single request, right? So you can get massive, absolutely massive performance improvements this way. That's true, yeah. Uh, if you think about it, really, is when you are trying to operate with object storage, you think in terms of objects. Your primitives right. are objects. You get an object, you put an object. But on the other side of the world, you are trying to do something with the object, in which case you're thinking in terms of data. Right. So that translation is sort of a weird translation because it needs more compute resources, more networking for you to just pull that data and process it. But with ST Select, just by changing that paradigm to, op to operate in terms of data on object storage is quite powerful, right? As you mentioned that, for example, if you have a, a gigabyte file, and if you're trying to retrieve one row out of it, it's it's, it's going to take a long time for you to do that, but if you do that with SD Select, all you're getting is that few bytes, so it's, yeah. It's amazing, I can basically say, you know, import Boto3, S3 equals Boto3 yeah. dot client, S3, S3 dot select from Something, object, right, yeah. and then my SQL query. Yeah. Uh, I just, it's, it's mind blowing that this is so like, easy it, to do. It, it is, right, and, and we can just show a, a quick way yeah, how you can do that. Are you ready to show a demo? Yeah, sure. Oh, this is uh, awesome. <clears throat> Could we switch to the screen, please? So if you look at the screen right here, and you can see on the screen that's a very small sample snippet of code in Python, basically, which shows you how to basically do this using SD Select. So if you look at it, this part of the Python code is similar to how you do a get object, right? right. In, in which case you're saying, yeah, I want the bucket, I want the key from that bucket. And what you're added in here is these four parameters. And the parameters are saying that I want to retrieve my data, which is basically a CSV file, and I use a SQL expression to retrieve the data. <coughs> so if I run this, for instance, you could, in this case, I'm doing a select star. So you can see that how this is running, and it's printing out the progress for the, what is happening in terms of the data. But right. at the same time, this file in particular is a quite a large file. This is almost around, I think, in tunes of around a gigabyte. And I'm doing a select count of star, what you can see in here. So all I'm saying is select counter star from the JSON file, and now it's going to print that data set whenever it's done, right? And my byte output is like very few, but you can see that for a gigabyte file, it processes data quite fast. So in this case, we're just counting the number of objects that are in there? Oh, the counting the number of JSON records which are in the file. Okay. Right, so you can, uh, it probably will take another few seconds just to get that output done. So can you talk a little bit about the underlying water pro uh, sorry, wire protocol for, for S3 Select? Because I imagine it's not done over pure right. HTTP like we do everything else. Yeah, um, there are a few differences, uh, but you can see the earlier part has completed, and now you can see that we process through, or we churn through almost eight gigabyte of data, which wow. has 17 million rows. 17 million. Imagine wow. if you were trying to download this on my laptop, I probably would still be waiting, maybe, you know. And then you'd have to pull up pandas, pandas, yes. you know, select and count, it's yeah. Not, okay. yeah. So, <clears throat> the key part, as you can imagine, as you, as you are seeing this, was that we were sending you some data constantly to know that, yes, your request is still active and we're still right. churning through it. So it's a sort of a new f way of communicating back to the client we designed, in which, while the query process is happening, we either keep sending partial data as the results keep accumulated, or we keep sending them some sort of heartbeat back to let them know saying that we are still working through it. Um, but the good part is, we integrated this response protocol with AWS SDK. So which means that if you're using AWS SDK, your programming paradigm is quite simple, which is that all you have to do is basically loop through iterator and say that for every record which I get back, I can do this and this. If you want, you can also extend that to include other frames which we send or other data sets we send. For example, we send a progress event to let you know that how much data we have scanned through. Awesome. So you know at what point where we are in the, in the life cycle of the request, or you can see there's a stats frame 
which tells you how many total bytes we process through. So there's a lot of information, you can utilize that in many ways to build a very effective uh, processing layer out of that. So taking a step back, yeah. uh, what was kind of our, our motivation for building this project? Because there's some questions in Twitch which are, what are the use cases here? Yeah. Uh, so could you talk about some of the customer-driven stuff that led us to build this? Yeah, sure. Um, and as you might have recalled that we did this and we announced this as preview during November. <laughs> and one of the thing, one of the very interesting piece of feedback we got from preview customers in that regard was that they want an API to access their data from S3. Earlier what customers had to do, for example, they had to take the data, define a relational structure, and then use ODBC or JDBC ways to access the data. They had to do this using EMR, or they have to do this using Hive, or use some other tools out of that. While if your intention is not to analyze data, if your intention is just to retrieve subset of data, for example, using a JSON, it does not map, the, there's a lot of impedance mismatch in that. Right. That was one of the very interesting feedback we got that customers love the ability to not specify a schema, for example. In this case, as you can see that, all I said is, it's a JSON file. And that's all. I didn't have to tell S3 Select what all fields it had, how does it map. I can just do arbitrary query based on the schema on a very dynamic way, yeah. without having to confront to a relational structure, uh, which is what they generally like. And the reason we build that, the use cases in terms of if you think about it, like Lambda. And Imagine that I wanted to do this using Lambda and SC Select was on there. You have limited storage you in Lambda, limited storage. you have limited time, right. you don't want to download a one gigabyte file if you only want you know, one section of that. Of that, so then how would you do it? If, for example, in this query, I, Lambda probably would have timed out under five minutes or something like right. that, right? So how would you deal with that kind of situation? Very cool. And the second would be perhaps around like, because customer when they run analytical workloads on S3, especially in context of S3 as a data lake, what we have found out is that their queries retrieve a lot of data out of S3, but they only use 10% of the data in general, give or take, right? So to retrieve 100% of the data for using 10% of the data was a wasteful of resource in many ways. So ST Select could help address that problem also, but in return, by using ST Select, not only they retrieve less data, but the queries become faster. That's really cool. So, Are yeah. What kind of SQL does it support? Is it is it standard SQL? Is there a subset of it that it supports? Yeah. You know, how, how does it kind of come together? Uh, it's pretty standard SQL. Okay. Right, so you can just use standard SQL, but what we do not support is some parts of SQL like group by, join. Gotcha. Because the as you understand, it's, yeah, it's our intention is to help data retrieval, not data analytics. So there's a very fine line between them. In, so. in that same regard, is there any kind of capability for querying multiple objects simultaneously? Uh, that there are tools like Athena, Athena. Who, who does that much more effectively than what ST Select can do. Gotcha. In due fullness of time, all of these tools will support ST Select internally, so customers will get a benefit out of it anyways. So yeah. everything will get faster and yeah. better. I like that. Um, so did you get, uh, you, you kind of mentioned some of the feedback that you yeah. got in the preview, but, but what specifically has changed between the, the preview of this and the now general availability of it? Right, uh, so we talked about the, uh, the wire protocol, the response protocol, and how it, you have to use SD, how you can use SDK uh, to quickly iterate through the, res, uh, the response. Earlier you had to install a new SDK and work through it. Not only that, we have added support for encryption. So now you can use SD Select deal. with encrypted objects also. In addition, we are available in every region where S3 is available, wow. which is another big deal. Uh, <clears throat> and in addition, what we have also done is we have integrated that with CLI. So now you can quickly run S3 Select through CLI directly, or you can use console which I can also show a quick demo. Yeah, I'd which love is, to see that. Could we switch back to the screen? In the console, as you can see, for example, when I get to an object, there's a tab which appears here, select from. Oh, wow. And now we can go to the tab. And what the console also does is, based on the file extension and various parameters, it automatically sets up some of the parameters. Like example, in this case, it knew that it's a CSV file, it is not compressed, it's not encrypted, and all of that. And then console also the ability to show a preview. So you click on show preview, you can see the first few parts of the data, so now I know that I have a header row, so I can say my file has a header row, right? And then I can just go click on next, and now it will just show me the entire object and I can start working through it. I can say select star, and now I can say that how I got the first five rows out of that. So that just acts as a quick way for users to start working with SD Select by using both CLI and console, which we also got a feedback as from the preview that there was a for customers to start using SD Select, they had to use SDKs. 
they could not test their queries in a visual way. And ah. both CLI and console provides a way for them to address that. So, so. I, I'm curious, you know, if, if we could get really, really deep technically for a moment, you know, yeah. the underlying uh, wire protocol, is that just like a protobuf definition or something? Or, you know, can, can <laughs> other SDKs implement this? Like, is it, is it, you know, can I read what's in the Python SDK and kind of take that to build my own? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, and if you are interested in the underlying wire protocol, you should actually look at the new SDK release. Um, I might the do that. Intention, <laughs> <laughs> the intention is that a lot of services which needs to respond data or send data back to customers, they're going to use the same protocol which we use. Which means think of like something, you could use the same programming paradigm to retrieve data from Kinesis in future, for example. Way cool. Right, so it's like the boundaries between how you retrieve data, whether from a database, whether from object storage, whether from a real-time stream, would get a little bit transparent because you can use the same programming paradigm across these different protocols. That's the power of this protocol in general. So it's, it's almost kind of like we're building this continuum of data, whether it be streaming, whether it be yeah. object storage, whether it be a database, where you can run the same queries that you're, normal, that you're used to writing. Right. Uh, you know, standard SQL that you, you kind of have familiarity with to query any of your data anywhere. Right. Uh, because that's what Kinesis Analytics does, for yeah. instance. You know, you just write the SQL query and then you have, you know, the part that you're interested in. The entire in. data in there, right. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, it's really, really powerful That's stuff. the intention of behind the us, behind this protocol, that we want to give customers a way they can just say that, now my data is not in S3, but it's in Kinesis, yet everything else downstream remains, does not change. Which is a very powerful paradigm if you think about it, right? Super so, cool. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe maybe you're not allowed to say it, but are, are there any other cool things on the roadmap? Any other cool stuff on the way? Yeah, um, it, it wouldn't be a hard surprise, I think, right, to talk about this, but like a lot of customers who are excited about using ST Select in context of the data lake. Right. And I mean, you probably could guess it, what is the next thing they ask for? Uh, <laughs> but they ask for support for Parquet, which is a oh, columnar format, right? Yeah. Because these formats allow people to optimize how they run analytics, like Athena, for example. Uh, so so additional that's, formats. Yeah, additional formats is one of the biggest features we are getting requests for. Uh, <clears throat> in addition, we have some requests for adding ability to do error handling and all of that, which we are going to work on. So. That'd be particularly useful for me, considering a lot of my CSVs have like random little errors in them, <laughs> uh, as we saw just a second yeah. ago when I tried to no, create yeah, my I own. To we totally understand It'd that, yes. It'd be cool to have some sort of resiliency around oh, you idiot, Randall, you messed up your CSV, but we're going to let you query it anyway because yeah. we're smarter than you are. No. Uh, that, that would be a really cool feature. <laughs> yes, for sure. Yeah, we are, we are working something like that, but yeah, very open to feedback. Let us know if you guys have any requests, more than open to that. And if people want to get started with this, it's available now in the console, and it's just pip install, update, and then all the other AWS SDKs yes. as well. Yeah. Wonderful. Using two CLI is as simple as just running the same get object command, so yeah. This is super cool. I'm really excited about it. I can't wait to play with it even more. Uh, I, I really, like, th we have lots of launches at reInvent, we have lots of launches at the Summit. Um, th one of the things, I, I always, like, I have favorites. You know, people, t <laughs> people tell me not to have favorites, and I can't, you know, say one thing is better than all the others. I love this service. Like, no, I, I do. Just, it's, it's, it's just the paradigm of being able to retrieve a data from an object store using an API is, is amazingly powerful for sure, changing. right? Like, yeah, it's game changing. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you, uh, Randall, yeah. Thanks. We've got some more stuff, so stay tuned, don't go away. We'll be back in just a little bit. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Again, thank you so much.